by 2030, according to the head of the British Computer Society, we may be able to store the digital video equivalent of your lifetime of human memories on a device no bigger than a sugar cube. Now, life logging is already happening with people wearing cameras in their hats and around their necks and taking thousands of shots a day automatically, but this is just wading in the paddling pool compared to what's coming down the pipe. A few years ago, Sony couldn't even get a robot to walk. Now, it has set up an entire research wing in Japan to look at what it calls robot anthropology, the study of how robots interact with each other and with human beings. So central do they believe robots will be to our everyday lives. Now, you may say, I live in Stoke-on-Trent, that seems that's never going to happen here. Let me tell you, a British company right now is working with Sony to develop robots that can teach each other. A robot will learn a word and pass it on to another robot and so on virally down the chain. In fact, we already have clever bots. Clever bots, it's not a sort of an unkind term for smart, Alex. Clever bot is a, is a robotic, pro, a, a, a computer program through avatars that will talk to other computers in a human-like fashion, as if two of us were having a conversation. In an experiment two weeks ago, the longest conversation between two computers went on for more than an hour, but I thought it was interesting. It very rapidly, apparently, descended into an argument. <laughs> so, so maybe these guys aren't as clever as we thought they were. There's a revolution going on in virtual reality. It's no longer about games in the arcade. You know, we've had telemarketing, we've had telepolitics. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is tele-everything. Virtual vacations are not far away. How many remember the holodeck from Star Trek? This is not far away. It is no longer pure science fiction. There's a British company right now almost completing their research into haptic technology. They're developing technology that will allow you to put on a suit and have all of your senses involved in a virtual reality experience. So not just sight and sound now, but smell and touch as well. You will physically have the sensation of being in a business meeting on the other side of the world when you're in your bedroom at home, which of course won't do you much good with BA frequent flyer miles, but that's the way science is. Virtual education is becoming a reality. In America right now, there is virtual George Washington and virtual Einstein. Scientists have taken the speeches and writings of these two greats and intuited from them how they would respond to certain stimuli and certain questions so that children can go to the avatar and ask the avatar of George Washington any question on anything but particularly politics and get a Washington-like response. Pretty cool technology. Again, you might say, virtual education never in my part of the world. Did you know it's already happening right here? Ofcom, two years ago, said that already children spend 900 hours a year learning in school, 1,200 hours learning from their parents and their family, but 2,000 hours learning from screens of one kind or another. In fact, more children in Britain today say they own a mobile phone than say they own a book. So virtual education is already a reality in our country.